Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Ben and I'm a certified vet tech from the Netherlands. On this channel, I watch and react to movies that feature a lot of animals and I teach you a little bit something about how those animals were treated or how certain scenes were shot. Today, I want to watch Homeward Bound with you, so let's get into it. I'm excited. This was actually one of my childhood favorite movies, so this ought to be good. Maybe even yours. I love how they kind of featured this dog as someone who was on the inside of it and how they present this from the dog's per perspective. I think that was really well done. <laughs> oh, please, please don't let your dog eat clothes. That's uh, it's extraordinarily bad for them. They can get those fibers in their intestines and they can cause a lot of trouble. Not to mention things like buttons and pins if they're in the clothing, so please don't do that. It's not good for them. The litter box. Even a I love how the relationship between the dogs and the cat is portrayed because that's kind of accurate. They usually get along very well if they're well socialized together. Not every dog and every cat are going to fight all the time. That's not realistic at all. This. He belonged to Shadow. Shadow was. Shadow's my favorite. Peter and Shadow's relationship for me has always been. No words. <laughs> Ooh. I love how the dog is growling and the dog's not even angry in that scene. <laughs> Fun fact, food focused dogs are generally the easiest to train. Again, dog is growling. Not even angry. I think the, uh, the story there was that the dog actually did not like broccoli. At least one of the four dogs that play Chance. Chant and Shadow had about four different dogs playing in. Sassy had ten different cats, and like every single animal was taught a different thing. It's actually a pretty cool little fact. Hungry? This is typical cat behavior. You try to feed them something and they're like, no, no, no. Until they do. Mine is the same way. Except it's always with salmon, not shrimp. Win <laughs> Told you. Yep, and then they want to. Yep. A little bit of licking. Hey guys. The, the reason why I point that out is licking can mean that they're a little bit stressed. Some dogs really don't like to be hugged. Some don't, some don't mind. And I'm assuming that these dogs were really well trained. So did it harm the dog? No. Did the dog like it? Eh, probably not. Oh, the cake. The cake scene. Yeah. They did not let the dog eat the entire cake, don't worry. What happened here, <laughs> I'm, I'm the old dude, I would have laughed my ass off. But yeah, what happened there is actually the dog was placed in front of the cake and they had a little bit of whipped cream put on his face and a little bit of whipped cream on that cake so that he would lick it. And this particular scene, you, you can see how things were filmed in cuts. And this is, is where... A fake cat comes in and then where the cat drops down into me in, in the, the big, big little box as sassy box. says it i forgot what it was called in english sandbox i think where the cat lands in that they actually just drop the cat from holding it in their hands and only from like yay high uh, it did not have to fall down and it certainly wasn't catapulted through the air <laughs> that dog <laughs> Yeah, dogs love to do that. Don't let them know. Don't let them stick their head out too far. And always make sure that they're in a harness uh, or some other thing that's keeping them down, uh, chained down. Because if you don't and something happens, they could either try and jump out uh, or, or if you get in an accident, they could fly out. You don't want that to happen. You want your dog to stay safe within that car. So keep, keep an eye out when they do that. That apparently was a blooper. <laughs> And they kept it in. <laughs> he was not supposed to do that. And this scene with the chickens is also filmed in cuts, like the scene with the catapult. The dog had no interest in those chickens whatsoever. Didn't care. So what they actually did, they used hand signals and commands to make the dog look in certain directions. And then they filmed the scenes of the dog and the chickens in separate scenes. Also fun fact, this movie is actually certified by the American Humane Society. And what they actually did was they gave it a modified certification, which means that while they were not present for all of these scenes with, with the animals, uh, they were present for a large part of them. And any scenes that they were not present for, they did supervise. 
uh, after the fact. So they did check all of the scenes to see if uh, the movie complied with their guidelines and it did. So that's why it doesn't have a badge at the end of the movie saying no animals were harmed because you only get that if the American Humane Society has been there for the whole time and they weren't. So what happened there is they actually put a trainer on the back of the door because the dog had no interest in those chickens whatsoever. And also these scenes that you see here were shot individually. What, done really well because you wouldn't say that. What they got around here? They got this bird the size of a Rottweiler. Looks like somebody bird ran over his size head. of a Rottweiler. <laughs> Turkeys are kind of big though. Absolutely. What's actually really cool about this scene is this scene too was filmed in little cuts. And the dogs never really had to jump over the entirety of the fence. It's a bit of movie magic that is used here. It's all used in little bit of bits of scenes and cuts. And the animals were not harmed during this. There was a few things from which I'm like, mm. but apparently they had like big platforms and all sorts of cushioning systems to make sure that they were safe. So my cat is distracting me. That was apparently a blooper. He was not supposed to run into that tree. The, the fish that we see here flopping on land is rubber on a string and they, they coated it in some sort of oil. Also, these scenes were filmed separately and then overlaid. So the bears and the dogs were not in close proximity to one another and whenever there was some sort of proximity they were actually separated by wires. Also, fun fact about this bear, the two previous bears that we saw were actually black bears. This is a very famous brown bear called Bart Bear. It was actually in several movies, but those were two different species of bear. They were not mother and cubs as, as they suggested. Completely different species. Again, you can see all the different cuts that were made. And, you know, those dogs were tired off right away as soon as they got out of the water. They also used heated pools as much as they could. And the cat that was used for, for swimming in a bit was actually trained to be in the water. Listen, um, could you do me a big favor, please? That's actually a really good idea to do. Um, when your pet goes missing, make sure that you make posters and that you flyer them like through people's mailboxes everywhere in your neighborhood. Because usually pets don't run far away. And by the time they do run far away, you have a little bit of leeway, so to speak. So you have a few days to spread flyers and to uh, go door to door to people, especially if your cat goes missing. The first six days or so, they will be close by home. So flyers, great idea. Well, you made it through the night. I guess that means you're gonna be okay. Not always. Also not a good idea to feed your cat milk. Uh, most cats are actually lactose intolerant. So unless it's specifically cat milk, which is lactose free, do not give your cat milk. Again, blooper. <laughs> this is actually pretty common. There's a lot of dogs that are very interested in porcupines. Oh, oh that's gotta be so painful in real life. Like the quills on, on this dog in particular for filming were put there uh, with spirit gum. So they're not actually in the dog. That's makeup and uh, spirit gum with fake quills, basically. But there's a lot of animals that absolutely do get porcupine quills stuck in them, either because they try to bite a porcupine, and especially dogs uh, have a tendency to do that. And usually what happens is they try and bite a porcupine and they get the whole mouth full of quills. It's, it's kind of a nasty little thing. And it's, it's hell to pull them all out. She feels... They're so looking for treats. <laughs> I know some people transport dogs like that, I wouldn't recommend it, but I also know some dogs are trained to do that and not jump out, but that's a risk you're taking. Also this scene always, you absolutely do not need those gloves, come on. Also that is so not necessary for that dog, absolutely not. For Chance, maybe, but Chance has quills in his face so I wouldn't recommend it. But. Shadow was completely calm, his tail was wagging, he was, you know, easy going, there was nothing wrong. And they muzzled him, which is what caused more anxiety. In this particular dog, he was trained with the muzzle, so it didn't cause anxiety for the dog himself. 
but some dogs can get really anxious when it's put on for the first time and you know just looking at shadow here there was no reason to put a muzzle on him and if there's no reason to put a muzzle on on an animal why would you it's just unnecessary stress if you can take the dog with you without having to uh, stress him out further that's always better yeah it's not happening that cat's not coming also the way they handled this just that's not how we do things at shelters. I volunteered at shelters, I worked at shelters. That's so not how we do this. Also, this is not how we perform this type of surgery, because it is a type of surgery. Maybe we would look at it this way, but we would first sedate this dog completely, especially considering that it will hurt to remove those quills, but we would sedate the dog, make sure he's comfortable, give him some painkillers, Remove the quills, let him wake up on his own terms. You do not, under any circumstance, try to pull those quills out while they are awake. It's a f no, that's not what we do. Like, obviously, this dog was trained, uh, but as soon as you pull one out, it's pain, and the dog is gonna be in panic. I let Sassy take the heat yeah. for the time I, I know why I they don't control. sedate the dog here, because he needs to escape later, but yeah, no. That dog would have been fully sedated. Yeah, that's why we sedate them, so that they can't do that. <sighs> Just incompetence there. Okay, this was partially done with a trained cat and partially done with a puppet. Because picking a cat up like that, not a good idea. You always have to support them because just picking them up by their neck is not good for them. Always make sure to support them and, you know, depending on how angry a cat is, also keep them away from you. I will, uh, I will link to everything that I've said, by the way, to, to the website that I found from the uh, Humane Society. All right, Sassy, we're nearly home. So what happens with these planks is they do break, but this is the real dog. And then when it cuts off is actually when it lands on like a cushion and then the rest of the way that's a puppet. Yeah, that's it. What they actually did here is they ma did make a slope that was about three or four feet high. But it wasn't that steep that the dog couldn't climb out on it on itself. And in fact, it did several times during filming. The reason why you see it go up a little and then stop is because they gave it the stay command and then it would slide back naturally. So everything that you see here is, you know, they're calling him like, come, 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 stop, and he's sliding back. And of course, it's a lot dramatized, but... Also, fun fact about the um, dog limping just then. Uh, they actually put a little uh, bean in between his toes so that he wouldn't uh, put too much pressure on that leg, so he got a little bit of a limp, but it didn't actually harm the dog. All right, so that was Homeward Bound. I hope that you uh, enjoyed this movie with me and that you enjoyed the commentary and the explanations that I gave. Uh, if you would like to see more of it, please uh, subscribe, uh, like the video and comment down below which movie you would like to see next because I would love to do more of these. And I would love to educate you all more on how these movies are made, how the animals are trained and you know, just in general to, to have a conversation and to find out more with you. So. Yeah, really enjoyed this. Hope to see you next time. See you soon.